Vic presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory and featuring Claire Neeson in Rendezvous at Meyerling. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory in our original play that you selected for this week, the unforgettable love story, Rendezvous at Meyerling. Here's a thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vapor Rub. There are many stories and many legends about the romance of Marie Facera and Crown Prince Rudolph. The actual historic facts have been set down for all to read, but the events leading up to those happenings have been cloaked in legend. Here, then, is one of these legends, Rendezvous at Myling. Fasten my pendant, Anna. There you are, mademoiselle. How do I look? In all my life, I have never seen anyone so beautiful. You will be the belle of the ball. You know, Anna, I have the strangest feeling. I think this night is going to be important to me. And why should it not be? You are young and beautiful, and you are going to a masked ball in the prettiest costume any young lady could want. Where is my mask? Here it is, hide by your gloves. Come, Marie. Your father and Arnold are already waiting in the carriage. Oh, I wish Arnold were not going with us. Arnold is so dull. He always says the same things. Arnold is of good family, and he will make you a very good match. What more do you want? I want someone who is challenging and romantic. I want someone who makes it fun to be alive. Arnold is a very fun young man. Arnold, you watch. As soon as we start to dance, he'll say, Marie, you do look most charming tonight. And then he'll wait a while and he'll say, Marie, you are the most splendid dancer I know. And then he is sure to say... Marie, you do look most charming tonight. Thank you, Arnold. Not at all. Marie, you are the most splendid dancer I know. Arnold, I feel a bit faint. Would you mind? I'd like to go over by the balcony a moment. Of course, Marie. I hope you feel better, though. We've just arrived, and we have the whole evening ahead of us. Yes, the whole evening. Arnold, would you mind getting me a glass of water? Of course, Marie. Will you be all right alone? Yes, of course. I'll be quite all right alone. I won't be long, Marie. What is such a pretty young lady doing all by herself out here on the balcony? Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know anyone was out here. Don't go. Well, I, I can't stay out here. I don't even know you. Well, I don't know you. And I'm going to take a chance. After all, this is a masked ball, and a great many strangers will get acquainted tonight on the pretext of pretending they're talking to an old friend. I don't know you, do I? No, not yet. Isn't it strange? I feel as though I do. Isn't it strange? So do I. Would you dance? Yes, I'd love to. There's something about the way you fit into my arms that's just about perfect. <laughs> I really should leave you. You know, I had a partner. Yes? I sent him for some water about... Oh, it must have been two hours ago. You think he may come looking for you? Oh, definitely. He's a very conscientious young man. Do you know what I do about conscientious people? No, what? I run away from them. What do you say? Where shall we run to? Any place, every place. Come on, let's take a look at Vienna. I'd like to see how it looks with you beside me. How does it usually look? It's serious, stodgy, dull. But I don't think it'll look that way tonight. Do you? No. I don't think it'll look like that tonight. Marie! Marie! That's my young man. Come on, out through this door. Marie! Oh, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then what did you do? I said, Madame, no self-respecting captain of the guard would think of going out with a lady he didn't know. I must be excused. So, you're a captain of the guard. Well, I was that night, anyhow. Oh, it's a wonderful night, isn't it? Just look at that moon. Ah, I ordered it especially for you. Mm. I called in Alphonse just before I left the ball. Alphonse is my man. Alphonse, I said, 
I want a very special moon tonight because I'm going to meet a very special young lady. You may be disappointed when I take off my mask. No. Give me your arm. Let us walk along the Danube and pretend that we've walked here every night for the past three months. Why three months? Because with three months' acquaintance behind us, you couldn't possibly be offended if I kissed you. I am going to kiss you, you know. You're very sure of yourself, aren't you? I am tonight. I don't know why, but... I only know tonight that we've met. That I had to... kiss you. Oh, darling. Darling. I've waited a long time for you. And for that kiss. I've waited a very long time. Take off that mask. Take off yours. All right. Hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. Look, it's almost daylight. Mm. This has been the most beautiful evening of my life. Yeah, I'm sorry it's over. Come, I'll take you to your door. When will I see you again? I don't know. As soon as possible. Isn't it funny? I don't know who you are or anything about you. I don't even know your name. I only know that there's always been a loneliness inside of me. And now it's gone. Oh, you're sweet. You're so very sweet. Does it matter that you don't know my name or who I am? No. All that matters is that at last I've met you. Huh. You know, I... I never in my life believed that people actually did fall in love at first sight. But they do. Don't they? Oh, yes. They do. I'll see you soon. I'll be waiting. Well, Marie, where have you been? I don't know how to answer that. I think I'm in heaven. Are you aware that it's daylight now? Your father and Arnold and I were nearly frantic. Whom did you leave the ball with? I don't know his name. You don't know his name? Marie, what's come over you? You'd never understand, Mama. You are a shameless girl. If I ever know you to do anything so disgraceful again, I shall send you away from Vienna forever. Now get to your bed. I suppose you've forgotten that you're to be presented to the Empress this afternoon. I had forgotten. I had forgotten everything in the world. Majesty, the Baroness Fichera and her daughter, Baroness Marie Fichera. Your Majesty? Your Majesty. Your daughter is very lovely, Baroness Fichera. Your Majesty is most gracious. Tell me, Marie, would you like to join my ladies in waiting here at court? Oh, Your Majesty, it would be the greatest honor of my life. It will be a pleasure to have you. I've known your father and mother a long time. You've been away at school, or I would have had invited you before. Oh, Rudolph! Yes. Come and meet the Baroness Vachera and her daughter, Marie. This is my son, Crown Prince Rudolph. Baroness Vachera? And the Baroness Marie Vachera. Baroness. It's indeed a pleasure to meet you both. Isn't Stephanie coming to the reception, Rudolph? No, Mother, she isn't feeling well today. Rudolph's wife is not as strong as our Austrian girls. Won't you introduce Marie to some of the others, Rudolph, while I have a chat with her mother? I'll be delighted. Will you take my arm, Baroness? With pleasure, Your Highness. Come in here where we can be alone. I think you've met anyone, everyone anyway. You aren't... You're sorry you came, aren't you? I would have told you last night who I was, but I was afraid you would run away. So I thought, tonight we'll keep everything shut out. Then whatever happens, we shall have had that much at any event. You meant never to see me again? I would have tried to stay away from you. I don't know whether I would have succeeded. Are you in love with Stephanie? I'm in love with you. My marriage is the usual royal marriage, my dear. I've never been in love with... I've never been in love in my life. Until now. We mustn't stay here in the library. Someone will come hunting for us. Not while the refreshments are being served. Marie, what are we to do? What can we do? Two things. Either see each other or not see each other. The wise thing is not exactly the happy thing, is it? Marie, don't turn away from me. Look at me. I don't want to look at you. 
If I do, I'll be lost because I must not see you again. We should never have met. We had to meet. We belong to each other. Marie... Please, don't put your arms around me. You were a prince and married. You can never belong to me. But I do belong to you. It's wrong. It's wicked. No, no, you're saying those things because you've heard other people say them. Is it wrong to be happy? Is it wicked when together we have a world of our own that is beautiful and exciting and sweet and wonderful? Yes, because you're married. What kind of a marriage is it? Because the heads of two governments think marriage is politics? Does that make it good and right and fine? A marriage is only good when it's between two people who want to live together because they cannot bear to live apart. Oh, Marie, if I could marry you... Don't. Don't say those things. We have no future not together. Let's not talk of what might have been or should have been. Marie, the hours we live run out swiftly. We've already wasted much of the time that we could have been together. Let's take the hours we have and live them as they come. Let us take whatever measure of happiness life will give us. And how will it end? I don't know. But if it matters how it ends, then go now, Marie. I won't follow you. I won't ever try to see you again. I'll respect your judgment. Well, Marie? Oh, my darling. My darling. I cannot say I will not see you again. It doesn't matter how it ends if I can be with you. You are all the happiness that I can know in my lifetime. I know that. Whether it's wrong or right or good or bad is beyond my power to judge now. I only know I love you. And I must see you. Or I will die. Marie. Let us take the hours and live them as they come. Without questions, without regrets. Until they end. If sorrow comes. When sorrow comes. When sorrow comes, we will meet it together. <laughs> oh, don't cry. <laughs> Please don't cry, Marie. I... I think loves like ours, Rudolph, are always set to tears. No. This hour will be gay. From the beginning, it will be gay. From the beginning until the ending. In just a moment, we will bring you the second act of Rendezvous at Meyerling, starring Victor Jory. It's the 11th of March. Winter is all over and spring is in the air. Yet millions of folks are dragging around feeling miserable with colds. Now, if a cold is distressing someone in your home, then you'll be interested in this. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. It's the modern way so widely used to ease distress of colds because the moment you rub it on, VapoRub's relief-giving action goes right to work to help relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages to ease the coughing spasm, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. And relief is so good because VapoRub penetrates, penetrates into the cold-congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. And for hours, this penetrating, stimulating action of VapoRub keeps right on working to bring such grand, satisfying relief. Now, whenever a cold strikes, remember this. Only VapoRub gives you this special, penetrating, stimulating action. Time-tested, home-proved, Vicks VapoRub. And now the second act of Rendezvous at Myling, starring Victor Jory as the Crown Prince and featuring Claire Neeson as Marie. <laughs> I suppose you've heard about Crown Prince Rudolph and that girl, that Baroness Vachera. I should say I have. Everyone in Austria has heard about them. Shameless pair. I saw them myself last night, dancing at our garden. I love to dance with you. You have wings when you dance. It's because I'm dancing with you. Look, everyone is looking at us. No, there are no people there. We are dancing alone across a star, without another human being in sight. Let's dance forever. Yes, let us dance forever. (laughs) 
Well, I don't know what you think about it, but I think the prince is a disgrace to the whole country. I don't know why his father or his wife doesn't do something about it. You know, I saw them riding in a carriage yesterday through the Vienna woods at positively a breakneck speed. Faster, Rudolph, faster. Oh, this is the best team I've ever had. What a pair of horses. I've never ridden like this in my life. It's like rushing to meet life, isn't it? I'll have to check them. We're almost to the end. Whoa! Whoa there, steady. Steady. I hope they have supper already for us. I'm starved to death. What would you like to eat? What does a crown prince usually eat? Peacock's breast and lark's tongue. And what does a baroness usually eat? Oh. Oh, how about roast beef? <laughs> wonderful, darling, wonderful. You're such a good fellow, Marie. You have such a zest for living. Yes, because I want every moment to be very full. I'm telling you, I saw them with my own eyes last night, walking beside the Danube outside the city, arm in arm. Ask me for something, something you've always wanted. I'd like to give you the world. You have given me the world. There's nothing that would make you more happy? Yes, there is. But you couldn't give it to me, Rudolph. No, tell me. I'd like a house. Yes. A small house somewhere out here beside the Danube. Oh. A house that you would be the heart of, Rudolph. A friendly house where we could invite the people we love to come and laugh with us. Yes, yes. And that would stretch to make room for two or three little boys who would look like you. Mm. And scowl like you and smile that same quick smile that makes my heart turn open. Rudolph. Oh, Rudolph. Oh, my dear. You see, I told you you couldn't give it to me. Such dreams are for the people, never for rulers. All over the country, people are sitting before their fires now in houses like that. And few of them know how fortunate they are. Or how desperately we'd like to be one of them. The world has no place in it for you or me. The world has locked its doors and set its words against us. We have only each other, Marie. That is so much more than many people have, Rudolph. You are my world. You're my life and my love and my happiness. I'll never give you up, Marie. Even though I die for it, I'll never give you up. Oh, Rudolph. Even though I die for it, I'll never give you up. Marie, you are never to see Crown Prince Rudolph again. I forbid you. Do you realize that everyone in the world is gossiping about you? I don't care what anyone in the world is saying. It's no one's concern but our own. You are behaving shamelessly, sneaking out at all hours, telling me you're going to meet some friend in the afternoon and meeting that man, constantly lying, deceiving. A year this has been going on, and in spite of everything I've said, I'm ashamed to have to acknowledge you as my daughter. Mother, please, please listen to me. Now try to understand. I shall never understand, nor do I want to understand. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. There is no compromise that can be made with honor. Rudolph is married and he is the future ruler of Oak. I love him. You have no right to love him. Do you think you can say you must not love and that will make a difference? If you do, you have no comprehension of love like this. We didn't choose to fall in love. We didn't plan it. It just happened, that's all. Happened the moment I looked at him. It was like coming home. I know he's married. I know he's the future emperor. But knowing it doesn't make any difference because we belong together. Together we are somehow complete and content. And apart, neither of us has anything. If that were not true of him, too, then I would do as you ask. But as long as he needs me and wants me, I will see him. You are a wicked, shameless girl. I'm not wicked. My love is good and honest and real. If we were hypocrites or bad people, we would have hidden our romance and lied about it. You shall not, you cannot make me ashamed of my love. It is my pride, it is my honor. It is my whole life. Marie, you are never to see the crown prince again. This disgraceful affair is going to end right now. And forever. Rudolph, there is no use in any further discussion. I forbid you to see this woman again. You don't understand, Father. You will never understand. No, I don't understand. What kind of a man are you? What kind of a prince? You have no right to sully the Habsburg name. You're disgracing your country and the throne that you will inherit. 
I order you to put this woman from your life. You are a prince of the House of Habsburg. Your dignity and honor is the dignity and honor of the entire lineage. And if I refuse to do as you ask? Then I will take matters into my own hands and see that she is sent where you will never see her. Well, Rudolph? Very well, Father. I will do as you ask. I'll meet her just once more and tell her. And then you will have nothing to fear from me again. I don't mean to be unfeeling, Rudolph. I know what it is to love. But love must be put aside if it is at odds with honor. When will you tell her? Going for a day's hunting, miling. I'll take her with me. You surely cannot deny me the right to tell her in my own way. You give me your word that this will be your last rendezvous? Yes. Our meeting at Marling will be our last rendezvous. Come out on the balcony, Rudolph. Look, the stars are fading. It's a beautiful night. I'm glad it's so beautiful. You know, it's a strange feeling to look at the stars and the moon and know that you'll never see them again. You suddenly feel that you should look long and hard at everything. It's not necessary, necessary for you to go through this, Marie. I'll leave you behind if you like. You're young, you're lovely. You have so much to live for. I have nothing to live for in a world that you've left. Come sit beside the fire with a little while. If you... Here. Let me put my arm around you. Darling. Tell me. If we had had that house, what would it be like? Well, every morning I would have gotten up early and fixed your breakfast. Yes. And we would have had it in front of the fire. And then I would have walked with you down to get the carriage yes. and ridden a ways with you and then walked home. And where would I be going? To work. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> and then I would have cleaned the house and dusted and made everything right for you to come home to. And in the afternoon, the boys and I would have had a frolic outside. Mm. And then I would get them all scrubbed and clean and ready for their father. And I'd come home and we'd have dinner and tuck the children in bed and then we'd... We'd sit like this night after night, growing old, growing old together. Oh, I'd have liked that house. I wish the world had a house for us, Marie. I know. Are you sorry? Have you any regrets? Regrets? Not one. I've had a year of more happiness than most people have in a lifetime. We've completed our lifetime this year, Marie. I know. And it's been beautiful. Maybe the beauty hurt a little now and then when people closed in on it. But even the pain was beautiful. Oh, Rudolph, the only thing that frightens me a little is that we're facing the unknown now. I may never feel your arms or your lips again. I may never find you again. Yes, you'll find me. It will only be a step. We'll cross the threshold together and then we'll find peace. And there's no peace on earth for us, my darling. There never would be. I know. And all day I've been praying that we will find it now. Look, my darling, it's almost dawn. Remember the night we met? The first time we saw the dawn together? And now it's the last time in this world. We've used up the hour three. Now it's the last hour. Almost the last moment. Here, let me carry you. Kiss me goodnight, Rudolph. My darling. Good night, my darling. Sweet dreams. God be with you. Until we meet again. Rudolph, there is a lion. Do you know it? Parting is such sweet sorrow. That we shall meet again when it be moral. We shall meet again. Shall meet again. Look, the sun is coming up. Yes. We shall be free before it fully rises. 
We promised it would be our last rendezvous, and we've kept our word. Close your eyes, my darling. Close your eyes. We shall meet again. When it be morrow. So they kept the last rendezvous at Myling, and the world that had denied them the right to love talked about them, wondered about them, finally wept, and left them in peace. Just a moment, an important message from Victor Jory. These days, we expect lots of things we buy to be different, not as good as they were before the war. But that isn't true of Vicks VapoRub. There are no wartime substitutes in VapoRub. The VapoRub you buy today is the same expert formula, the very same effective quality you enjoyed before the war. To keep faith with the millions of families who rely on VapoRub, we combed and scoured the free countries of the world for the essential aromatics and medications. We were successful in finding new sources. And so, my friends, there are no wartime substitutes in VapoRub. It's the same good VapoRub that has become the best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Time-tested, home-proved Vicks VapoRub. This is Victor Jory. Will you again help me select next week's play... Many have written for Paramount's poignant, exciting motion picture, su- picture success, Till We Meet Again. A great many others have asked for Ben Heck's brilliant and moving story, Miracle in the Rain. And still others have asked for the beautiful love story of Robert Browning and Elizabeth Barrett. So won't you help me choose between Till We Meet Again, Miracle in the Rain, and the love story of Robert Browning and Elizabeth Barrett. Write me care of Columbia Broadcasting, New York, 22 New York. And now, friends... Something which we must all do our part. The heroic victories of our fighting men could not have been possible, of course, without the stores of good food that have gone to them. We have five million troops overseas, and more are going over every week. To feed them means that a lot more certain foods must be sent to them than went last year. And so, for civilians, the stocks of many vital foods are lower than ever before since the war began. That's why the recent stepping up of food rationing was so necessary. And a vital part of every civilian's war duty is 100% cooperation with the rationing program. Always pay your ration points in full. And whenever possible, buy low-point and ration-free foods. Our script today was an original radio play by Gene Holloway and was directed by Richard Sandville. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to be with us next week when Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you another great matinee theater production starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.